everybody, welcome. Welcome to this uh, webinar for Star Plaza Hungary. Uh, today we'll be discussing PV policy up to uh, PPA, uh, the PPA business model in, in Hungary. So lots of content, so stay with us until the end. Uh, and here's, oops, sorry, got a bit too fast. Here's the agenda for today, short introduction, uh, and then I'll leave um, the word to uh, Eastman Pox from the Hungarian Service Association and to Leah Kanipova from Baiwa. Uh, just to check, uh, Isma and Leah, uh, let us know uh, if you can hear me, uh, just to run a quick check. Uh, are you there? Can you hear us? Uh, let's see if we can hear you. Hi, Nicola. Yep. Yeah, we're all good. Perfect. Great, great, great to have you with us then. And then we have time for Q&A, so, so stay with us and, and send in your questions. I'll explain that, that right away. Just a quick mention about Sir Plaza for those of us who don't know us. We are a Dutch company. Um, this is our mission to positively impact the world by accelerating sustainable energy, energy transition. Uh, we focus on events in the solar industry, but also on content uh, such as this one, webinars, web papers, and articles. Uh, by the way, as I mentioned, we focus on events. So, uh, this one there is a build up for our conference, the Solar Future Hungary, which we're organizing uh, in Budapest on the 21st of October. It's going to be the second edition. You can find more info at the link here or just email me after the webinar. Uh, so, practical notes. So, uh, as I mentioned, send in your questions. We have the QA slash chat box. So, send everything in there. I'll address them to our speakers later. For technical issues, also, my colleague Tom, also here. Uh, who's joining will will try to to help you out during the webinar. Uh, we will send the presentation slides afterwards, so a uh, couple of days, usually one two days, and you'll receive them in your inbox. So no worries there. Uh, at this point, I'll I'll introduce the speakers. Uh, first is Lia Kanipova from Baiwa, uh, who has gained experience in the renewable energy sector in uh, Chile and Germany. She joined Baiwa in 2019 and focuses on the Eastern European market and uh, the Baltics, with a degree in law in Russia and two uh, master degrees uh, in environmental and social sciences. Uh, secondly, although we'll be presenting first today, uh, is Ivan Pox on behalf of the Hungarian Solar Association with more than 15 years of experience in the solar energy industry. Um, I include the curriculum, but definitely plenty, plenty of experience here uh, from uh, from the mall group, the Hungarian oil um, or gas companies. Um, and as I mentioned, he's joining on behalf of the, the Hungarian Soil Association, but is also part of various think tanks uh, and located uh, located in the country, focus, focusing on energy, batteries, and uh, EVs. Uh, at this point, um, Isvan, I'll uh, I'll leave the, the stage to you, so so we can go ahead with the presentation. Uh, you'll be first, then there is Leah, so stay with us. And uh, as I mentioned, during the presentations, feel free to to send in your questions, uh, and we can begin now with the agenda. So Isvan, the stage is yours. Many thanks. Um, I'm very pleased to have a chance to share my thoughts with you guys and uh, let's start the presentation. So I always like to think on uh, how I can how I can analyze uh, the situation only in a few words and uh, what I can say uh, what I can say that the Hungarian renewable market is no it looks like like a base camp. Oh it's maybe it's sometimes too fast. Okay, so here we go. It's a base camp. We definitely reached a certain level of um, uh, of maturity of the uh, of the market. Uh, we left the funny tourist we met in the airport uh, in the downtown. So and uh, uh, next to us uh, professionals and all of us uh, we are uh, we are looking for the peak. And uh, the mountain is definitely, uh, definitely a, a, a big target, and we are far from, uh, far from this market. So at the at this moment, it is a long journey. Uh, locals are here. We can uh, give us uh, pass uh, pass phase. Uh, we can see better, let's say, the uh, color of the 
a color of the snow, color of the sky, so they can help for us to uh, to reach the peak. But uh, anyway, we can do it uh, do do, uh, do it itself. So let's see how we started. Started in the very beginning when I was in a, in a, in a more M M uh, guy. Uh, we never thought that solar will be uh, so uh, so successful, and we never considered that it would be an ever uh, competitive uh, in the in the energy market. No, we are already reached uh, two gigawatts in Hungary, from which uh, one third is about households, and two third is uh, two third are the uh, utility 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 size uh, power plants. How we reach this point? At very first, uh, until 2016, uh, we had a, a feed-in tariff system, which called CAT, uh, which was a really predictable. Practically, wasn't a big deal. wasn't uh, wasn't a rocket science. If you if you had a, a little, uh, if you was diligent enough, you could uh, you could manage it. Um, and obviously, it raised a big gold rush uh, on that time. Oh, well, we still have uh, cat plants, which is not uh, not on commercial operation. There is a big chunk of uh, cat plants, especially uh, about uh, let's say 500 megawatts, which is not built, uh, known and not uh, financed yet. Maybe it's even more. But uh, in 2019, the government uh, introduced the European-wide auction system. Uh, it's called METAR. And we had uh, already two uh, successful uh, auctions uh, we had, and uh, the new one, the third one, is already already launched. Why it is a really good to talk about uh, solar because uh, it has full support from uh, Hungarian government. The national uh, climate strategy uh, with 2030 and with outlook to 2040 uh, has really uh, challenging targets. And uh, well, it is all about solar, uh, practically nothing about wind, uh, which obviously kind uh, make, makes um, sometimes issues in the in the market i will talk about it later uh, but definitely for us for pv developers for tpv companies for epcs for uh, for for power producers it's a kind of heaven so let's check the uh, the key numbers so uh, the national climate strategy wants to have about 20 percent share of renewables uh, uh, from the uh, from the all of uh, primary energy sources of which 6.5 gigawatt uh, solar and what is let's say probably not well known uh, the national strategy uh, counts with um, with about 18 percent increase of energy consumption uh, in the in the market, of which 48% uh, 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 is dedicated to few specific sectors, which will be a good lead for PPAs on later. These sectors are uh, the majority uh, is the chemical industry, especially we have uh, Borshot Cam, um, former TBK, which is now full mall uh, facility, polyol uh, industry, whatever, uh, which uh, consuming a hell of a lot of energy. Uh, obviously, this region is really, uh, really, which has a really intensive car industry, and all the supply chains related to the cars, the polymer industry, will also uh, slightly increase their energy consumption, which could have uh, opportunity to, uh, for our developers. Okay, um, six point uh, five gigawatt, but home. What is uh, interesting that. Um, uh, that uh, there is the strategy is counts with let's say uh, a doubling the actual uh, actual uh, uh, capacity of households from 700 uh, megawatt to 1.4 uh, gigawatt. There is a significant part from uh, feed-in tariff system uh, of, from CAT. It's 2.9 gigawatt, of which I have. Frankly speaking, DOPS, uh, who, uh, if if they could finally manage uh, this uh, project, because uh, well, they have to build it in this year, and there is the two gigawatt uh, from Metar. 
and there are some uh, some others as well uh, from the former uh, let's say transitional super schemes uh, which is interesting that the strategy does not count with ppas but i think it is just just the just because the uh, topic that in that time the ppas was so far from the uh, from 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 the realities that uh, that it could be reviewed in later stage well uh, it this strategy was issued um, almost two years ago uh, and the review should be done uh, recently well the difference is about the uh, cart and metar system uh, well it was a definite gold rush but uh, and with uh, some leakage in uh, in legislation so therefore it was worth to uh, worth to build a, a 0 0.5 megawatt power plant and made a prospects from, from them because the permission uh, permission procedure was much easier uh, if you could combine these uh, power plants to let's say one bigger uh, chunk uh, compared to one uh, up to 50 megawatt uh, plant. Uh, well, uh, this obviously caused a lot of uh, uh, permission issues, uh, land issues, whatever, whatever, and especially a forest of different telemechanical units uh, in the in the grid. So finally, the uh, government closed this uh, closed this gate. And the new METAR system definitely restricts uh, such kind of prospects and uh, invented the 1000 meter rule. So uh, power plants within, uh, within 1000 meters uh, with the same connection points will be, uh, will be counted as one power plant, even uh, if the investor is different. So it's really important and you can lose your uh, use lower bid uh, because, uh, because you, you might be counted as uh, over, over breaching the capacity, which has uh, happened uh, after the pilot, uh, the pilot was in 19. Um, it was maximized on 20 megawatt uh, after it increased to 50 megawatt no it's again 20 megawatt which is a, which causing a headache to developers and uh, and uh, final uh, investors because it's uh, it's a bit unpredictable it is rather because of the uh, latest uh, latest uh, uh, latest situations which happened in the balancing market that's that's my understanding Okay, you have to understand the uh, 1000 meter rule because it's uh, uh, really important from, uh, from development point of view. If the connection point is, uh, is on the grid, and you uh, and it is uh, it is uh, it is within uh, thousand meter, it is only uh, it will counted as one uh, power plant. The issue is that. Um, in the two former tenders uh, it was the same uh, legislation for the substation as well uh, and well it's uh, it's really weird because um, you know if you have uh, 50 megawatt power plants uh, connected to the substation and the connection point was the measuring point of this thousand meter rule obviously you cannot uh, you cannot avoid uh, and you cannot build an, another substation just for that so you connected your uh, 50 megawatts power plant to uh, to the same substation uh, and you you will uh, you was uh, disqualified finally it's uh, it seems it's uh, managed and uh, the the authorities finally understood or constant uh, argues uh, regarding this uh, rule with the big uh, power plants so be careful there is an opportunity to uh, to avoid this uh, disqualification but you have to have to be prepared okay let's see the numbers um, the main differences between the 19 and 20, uh, 20 tender was the capacity and the, the intensity of the competition. So it was definitely much more competitive, the uh, 2020 tender. And that's my uh, intention from, 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 the, uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the recent tender as well, which is ongoing, that the competition will be definitely high. Uh, just to understand in uh, terms of, um, in terms of uh, capacities, uh, in the first pilot tender, about 300 uh, megawatt capacity uh, competed 
on the uh, second tender, it's completed almost uh, 1.3 gigawatt. So, and it's interesting that 35 uh, 35 companies uh, try to uh, try to uh, take a chance for second uh, for the second round from the uh, from the former first one, but only two of them uh, won the competition. And it is uh, uh, not only for the uh, big, but but for the but for the small category as well. What we see is definite uh, uh, price decrease in the second tender so it's uh, almost uh, grid parity and uh, it is a really competitive price what uh, what we uh, what we have to understand that we, the winners use the completely different technology which was uh, used before in hungary in a card system everyone was really let's say uh, lazy and uh, satisfied with the fixed uh, uh, fixed systems however the competition raised the uh, technology and the quality as well and the trackers and bifacial systems are the winners waiting for movement Oh, okay, maybe it's it's again too much. Yeah, I think we went just with a slide too far. But okay, okay, no one slide. This is my, this is the slide. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. Let's stay here. Okay, uh, well. Base camp. Uh, we definitely uh, have uh, significant uh, PV capacities in the uh, in the country, and compared, let's say, to uh, to Gold Rush uh, with the uh, with the with the other Central European uh, Central European countries, where uh, where the Hungarian government definitely want to avoid. Uh, public, uh, public in ignorance of uh, power plants, which are, let's say, the major uh, major uh, topics of the uh, of this uh, penetration. Uh, using uh, too much land, uh, having balancing issues, and well, we all affected by the COVID uh, COVID situation. Uh, the, the the COVID situation uh, definitely decreased the immunity of the Hungarian economy. So therefore, the Hungarian government uh, invented specific rules. Well, what we see in uh, what we see in reality, the land prices uh, were rocketed. Let's say it's uh, doubled or tripled the land price for for a hectare. Uh, significant uh, fear and publicity in the in the news about that uh, pv plants uh, will take out the valuable land from agriculture uh, in several uh, in several territories uh, pv plants are restricted to be built next to the balaton lake or specific uh, uh, specific areas uh, well, and sometimes uh, it's really happened that fertile land was used for uh, for uh, for PV plants. There was an iconic uh, picture. I, I, I maybe I will find it later. Where in the middle of the forest, uh, the investor built a half megawatt plant. Uh, frankly, it was a it was a it was a rectangle of the uh, of forest. We we cut the trees, whatever. Well, uh, it was uh, really not a good sign for the industry. Uh, hopefully, uh, this gold rush uh, period is already over. Uh, professional investors uh, uh, using a proper selection and, and, uh, and using only unproductive lands for, uh, for, for, for power generation. Um, from governmental point of view, brownfield investment definitely preferred. However, brownfield investment it is a bit pricey, so it's. Um, we should uh, clear up the minds of the government uh, because I think we have a um, not clear standpoint about that. Um, restrictions, yes. And uh, recently, 
uh, there is a um, uh, there is a decree uh, or let's say an uh, uh, let's uh, a suggestion before the parliament uh, to enable agrovoltaic generation uh, up to uh, up to utility scale so it's uh, it's not uh, not in force yet but it is coming and we have to be prepared okay uh, which is really a hot topic uh, again in Hungary. That's the increasing balancing cost. You, you have to understand that the, the Hungarian system is quite uh, uh, so it's not a dispatchable system. Uh, we have uh, we have nuclear, which is which takes significant role, uh, 40, 50 percent from the power generation, and obviously we cannot stop the nuclear power plant. Uh, we have aging uh, coal plant uh, Matra, which is uh, from capacity point of view, it's about one gigawatt, but it is um, uh, sometimes it's just 500. Uh, we have a significant degrees of solar and we have aging uh, gas, uh, natural gas power plants. Uh, there are only few power plants, which I would say uh, modern and, and, uh, and uh, competitive, which uh, definitely uh, gives a, a, a stable basis for high balancing prices. Yes, I made that, uh, some assumptions. Uh, these are licensed capacities in Hungary. It's very hard to find, let's say, to pick up a, a stable point when you can say that this is the situation right now. What you have to understand that uh, the, the overall consumption of Hungary, it's about uh, seven, seven point half gigawatt uh, in a day. Uh, or from which about uh, five uh, gigawatt is uh, produced by uh, local producers and um, or maybe sometimes more, sometimes less, uh, and all others uh, coming from, uh, from, from imports. And uh, because of the aging coal plant, because of the aging gas plant, so these capacities are uh, nice to have capacities, but, but uh, frankly speaking, our system is really not uh, is really not flexible. What's happened? Uh, let me pay special thanks to Peter Landway, who is the uh, president of the Hungarian Wind Association. Uh, he made the uh, his uh, his special collection of uh, of secondary uh, uh, secondary uh, reserves market prices, uh, and we can see that uh, the prices started to uh, to increase um in, these are in uh, prices in 2020 so you can see that on, on average it's about uh, uh, 100,000 uh, foreign per uh, megawatt or on a yearly basis but at the end of the year it became 25% uh, uh, more and these are the positive side and uh, well, uh, the negative sides also, uh, and, and in 2021, it's even started to even more. And uh, well, what's happened in uh, in uh, February and uh, March, that the balancing cost of the producers overall uh, was five times higher uh, than uh, than in the highest uh, highest point in 2020. So it's uh, it's raised immediate. Uh, uh, hotlines to the government and know the energy office the tso the industry all we all be working on uh, specific solutions how to how to decrease uh, let's say immediately uh, the prices um, obviously with uh, uh, mostly with market uh, market tools but uh, but sometimes with uh, regulatory uh, uh, use as well you can see uh, the negative uh, ne negative prices also uh, uh, try to uh, try started to increase and it is uh, uh, and it is even uh, worse uh, uh, in 2021 so it's uh, it's three times higher than uh, than 2020. Okay, how we can solve it? Uh, we can uh, increase the uh, uh, increase the ID market. Uh, obviously, Picasso is ongoing, so we are waiting that uh, the Mavir in the last year the lead time for the uh, for the scheduling uh, it was uh, 2.5 hour, but it is already uh, reduced uh, 
as far as I remember correctly, be the one or uh, we're trying to change the market rules of cut, cut producers to uh, g giving them a special opportunity for uh, balance itself. Batteries are welcome. Well, and dispatchable PVs is definitely a question. Uh, and special rules uh, to cope with Hungary. There are two spe special rules you have to, you, I have to underline. The investment protection rules. Hopefully, it will it will it will cancelled when the uh, when the pandemic is uh, uh, is uh, cancelled. Over three uh, three hundred fifty million foreigns, you have to uh, you have to apply for the uh, for the Minister of Energy uh, to agree uh, to approve the transaction, uh, and the minister has uh, thirty days about that. Uh, and Robin Hood tax, which was invented in 2000, uh, uh, 2008, nobody in that time thought that uh, that uh, renewable producers will be uh, subject to uh, subject to Robin Hood tax, which is a free, uh, 31 uh, percent tax. It's definitely huge. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about because Leah uh, will talk it in, in details and I don't want to consume her time about that, uh, which is, I think, important to uh, to understand from um, uh, from financial point of view that uh, compared to the matter, uh, it's about 10 percent uh, price increase required to compensate the negative effect of uh, of the of of the robin hood taxation in case of ppa uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the length of the period uh, we calculated with the same mpvs with the same irrs whatever uh, made the financial analysis of that so what we need to uh, what we need to do uh, to reach the peak uh, definitely to give a chance uh, for the investors uh, we have to go back to the predictable system so not just jumping from uh, 20 to 50 again uh, after that uh, 50 or whatever let's say give give a uh, stable and uh, sound work to uh, to investors uh, Define how to manage the uh, the the flexibility issues on the on the market, and definitely cancel the drugs of the Hungarian economy, which is uh, the Robin Hood taxation and this investment protection rules, because it, these are uh, these these will take uh, definite uh, slowdowns for the uh, for the market. So that was my presentation. Many thanks to you guys, and uh, I am really happy to answer for your questions. Thank you, thank you, Isvan. And if there are questions or presentation, please send them in uh, in the Q&A chat, and uh, we'll leave the uh, floor now to Lia. So oh, hi, everyone. And um, so um, yeah, good afternoon, everyone, and um, um, greetings from actually sunny Freiburg. I am based in the Freiburg office uh, of Viva. Um, and yeah, in the end of this day, happy to discuss about hopefully a bright um, PPA future for the Hungarian market. Um, and uh, let me just um, start with the, maybe the table of uh, the content of the, today's presentation. Uh -huh. Now it's also slow. I have the control, right? Yeah, 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 yeah it's just a bit of patience. But it's yeah, okay. okay. Uh -huh. to a little bit too fast. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to present a little bit about the Viva Resolar projects. That's where I'm working. Um, also about our track record of uh, PPAs in uh, globally, worldwide. Um, and um, yeah, I guess the, the main part of the presentation would be the part three about the Hungary and um, the future of the uh, PPAs there, what we see so far, what we observed on the market and um, yeah, um, a few conclusions on that. And also as I am yeah, not really a PPA, um, expert we have all team dedicated to that but i am a project manager um and uh, i'm looking into the projects uh, so i also will talk from that perspective a little bit in the in the last part on the challenges and opportunities for for the project developments on on the hungarian market i will not uh, concentrate too much on the uh, presentation about baiva i guess uh, you will all receive the slides so you will can have a yeah, further look uh, there uh, sorry it's a little bit slow 
Yeah, but um, me working at Baiva Re Solar Projects is part of Baiva RE Renewables and uh, yeah, all together part of Baiva AG. We also now have a new investor um, that will be shown the graph right now. Yes, um, of energy and the energy infrastructure partners. Um, and um, yeah, we are present in quite many countries in the world. Actually, every time I look into our biggest presentation, the number of countries uh, is growing, number of employees is growing as well. I'm sorry, it's just a little bit slow. Oh, I am, I am too fast. Um, yeah, just a few numbers here, um, a little bit of geography as well. Um, as I said, we are present worldwide. Um, of course, I am in this case working more at the EMEA region, covering for um, countries in uh, Eastern Europe and also in Baltics now as well. Yeah, um, let me just move further. We have, um, yeah, um, also from the project side um, at the moment, um, yeah, also um, always growing numbers uh, for gigawatt installed capacity in wind and solar globally, and also uh, the, the project pipeline is growing as well. Um, yeah, with 14 gigawatt at the moment. We also provide all the other type of services for the industry and uh, operational uh, management, digital asset operations, technical management. We also starting now with IPP. Um, and we also provide tailor-made um, energy solutions for um, CNI clients. Yes, I am a little bit further on our track record or worldwide. Um, also a few numbers here uh, of the PPS that we have already signed. Um, yeah, you see also among the um, off-takers names that you definitely already heard about or you know, uh, you know them. Um, and also both with utility and traders and also with corporates, um, also under different type of structures, um, sleeved and direct wire virtual PPAs um, with different time um, terms, yeah, from 10 to 25 years even, from fixed price and cap and floor, um, yeah, so different structures. Um, and also on the right side, you can see further that the most experience we have is again at the EMEA region. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe I'll talk about further a little bit on that the next slide um yeah here you see that the number of the, the countries in europe uh, where we are as under the current ppa markets where we already signed ppas either for wind or, or solar um uh, also including those markets where we are quite advanced and um, feel quite happy about the ongoing negotiations on ppas like for example denmark and sweden um and uh, one of the um, other market, which I will also um, talk a little bit further on, is the Poland. That's where we also signed recently uh, a PPA, um, the first one with a virtual corporate PPA there. And we, you see uh, quite also a long number of countries where, which we consider also potential PPA markets. Uh, you see Hungary also as being one of them. Um, and um, yeah, the, uh, here we um, some markets are quite already quite advanced. Others we just start to to look into them and see. Um, you know, evaluate the situation not only just from the PPA side, but also like market in general and and, and the projects opportunities there. And the next slide um, is on, um, yeah, just a few examples of what we have um, already achieved or the experience that we have already gathered. Um, like for example, the in in the Spain of 175 megawatt projects uh, where we signed a 15 year long PPA with uh, Statcraft. And um, yeah, here the, the price was fixed uh, for the five first years and for the next um, 10 years, following 10 years, it was uh, a floor price. Um, yeah, and another one quite recent was with um, 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 Budweiser um, that was um, also in, in Spain, with also quite, quite big capacity of almost 170 megawatt peak. And um, this is now ongoing. Uh, the construction of those is uh, ongoing, uh, finished, um, supposed to be finished in March, 2022. Um, yeah, also 10-year virtual PPA with uh, with the company. And um, the next one, um, also maybe a quite a good example, is it's, it's a neighbor, it's also newly established, so to say, PPA market is um, in Poland. They also started with, um, yeah, uh, with um, the very similar way towards um, increased capacity of solar in Poland. And um, also a few years ago, no one would have thought that it will reach uh, what they already achieved right now. There we have a project of 65 uh, megawatt peak and also the uh, the PPA has been signed for 10 years um, with Hydermax Men. Um, and as part of it as um, very thrilled, of course, and happy to achieve 
um, at this kind of result and um, we always looking to expand further and bring our our knowledge, our experience also into the further markets and Hungary, of course, um, also being one of them um, that we consider, as I said, um, or that, like Nicola said, I'm, I'm working at Viva for one and a half years and one of my key tasks was actually to look into the region of Eastern Europe and see where the key markets are. Um, of course, Hungary was um, by then one of the, the active markets where with a really impressive growth of install capacities of solar um, and very nice uh, feed-in tariff uh, schemes and, and also now METAR schemes. And as the next logical step, we hope to see also PPAs are coming there as well. Of course, there are, it's not always easy and it's not always um, yeah, plain vanilla, but um, um, definitely there shall be some uh, mitigation measures available and that's what we are working to find out and basically build, out, build um, up our way towards it. Um, maybe a little bit on, on the side section, uh, we want to just to present about the, the electricity market in general in Hungary, what, where, what we see, what are the key things we look at maybe to um, yeah, identify uh, the, the potential there. Um, yeah, in 2014, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary and Romania started to cooperate together on the day ahead, um, yeah, markets, uh, the market coupling. We see that the prices between uh, Romania and Hungary have been quite aligned uh, since 2019. That's also when uh, Romania uh, became a net importer um, of the electricity instead of exporter. Um, yeah, and due to, uh, in, the, in the graph below, um, you see the price development in Hungary since the uh, beginning of last year. Uh, which is quite um, yeah volatile yeah but of course there are um, corona was there as well but it's also uh, due to the uh, increased carbon prices and so far in 2021 we see that the average price is hung in Hungary is um, quite high um, of uh, 57.6 euros per megawatt hour uh, that, that's uh, the indication or that's what we see at the moment um, yeah of course it's all um, a question how it will develop further but I will come back to that later. Um, I'm just uh, waiting for the next slide. Yeah, here we also looked into the uh, price developments uh, for the uh, non-household consumers um, and that we have observed also the growth there to, since as you can see on the graph on the left uh, from 2017, the increase of the price um, was there from um, yeah, 0 0.06 uh, euros per kilowatt hour in 2017 up to 0.085 euro per kilowatt hour in 2020. Uh, but of course, at the same time, it shall be uh, correlated with the euro and foreign exchange rate. Here, unfortunately, um, yeah, uh, the situation does not look very good, but um, that's, uh, that's, that's the market. And um, this is also something to consider also when we calculate the project, of course, as well. Um, yeah, that's also one, one of the um, yeah, hurdles, something we should uh, figure out how to deal with that. Um, uh, the next one um, also about the, um, um, the key maybe factors how you can describe the Hungarian market at the moment is that it's quite volatile and illiquid. Um, from on the left graph, you can see the price development um, from the beginning of 2021 yeah, until yeah, very, very recent numbers. So for this year, you can see that it's been quite um, a big difference from like 53.5 in uh, euro per megawatt hour in February. Um, all, the way, all the way to 72.3 euros per megawatt hour in May. Um, so we see that uh, there is uh, quite a big volatility on the market. At the same time, uh, yeah, maybe the corporates seeing that, observing that and living through this would be also would drive them their interest to actually sign and the PPA and secure this, uh, the price for some hopefully also long term. Um, yeah, from the other side, on the on the right hand side, you see um, the, the graph also shows how illiquid the market is. That the um, the open interest for the um, traded volumes here yeah, here on the um, for 2022 um, and the next years. Um, yeah, what you can see basically is that there is not much interest to buy long ahead, um, and that makes the, the market not not liquid. So it's again due to the associated risks. Um, the next one also, of course, it's not just about what's happening on the market today, but also how the prices will develop in the future. Um, yeah, there are some forecasts available. Um, we see overall the trend uh, being that the prices um, are projected to be increased. Of course, how much exactly is always a question, but uh, a general trend also something which um, 
is a good indication for us and uh, a driver for us as well to look further into the market. And um, yeah, and, um, having a higher prices, of course, makes always the, the project uh, more feasible. Um, now that this slide, um, here I would like uh, just a, a quick overview of what we have been concluding so far about the utility and corporate PPAs and also the main hurdles on the market to conclude such agreements. Um, of course, we are quite new and um, like every, there are no really PPAs concluded for now for, for solar uh, projects. Um, but what we observed so far is that the markets are quite attractive um, for PPAs. Uh, from the utility side and also from corporate side, there are um, many or decent amount, let's say, of great fourth international players and potential off-takers. Um, and uh, with, in the case of utilities, the PPAs from legal perspectives uh, perspective are possible. Um, and we also observe the interest from their side and the, the appetite is there, which is already also quite good. And also even for long-term uh, price agreements. Um, yeah, but again, the to fix the price for that long term, that would be uh, quite challenging because of, again, limited liquidity on the market. Uh, yeah, but um, surely it's, uh, next steps is to see where, where are the solutions, what can be, what can be uh, found out there to, to have a win-win situation for everyone. Um, and for, in regards to corporate PPAs, um, yeah, the same can be observed that there is interest and there is um, um, a, a big, quite a big potential from the side of off-takers um, to, to find the a great worthy one for such an agreement um but yeah as i said no no ppas um, for corporate with corporates has been signed, uh, signed to date um we see also a few uh, points from the legislation perspective for example for sleeved ppa we would uh, the corporate would have to hold a trading license and in most of the cases they they really don't and they don't need to um, they are so electricity trading license. Um, yeah, from regarding the virtual corporate PPAs, they are legally allowed, but or they are not forbidden, so to say. Um, but they are not specifically regulated. There are a few points which we are also at the moment um, looking further into and see how we can make them work as well. Um, so, and these are the main hurdles that we see. One is the, the legislation framework is not complete. Uh, yet, uh, for corporate PPAs, um, we have high balancing costs. That's also something with this one already yeah, talked about a lot. Um, also, our feedback is that it's it's not very it's yeah it's almost impossible at the moment to find a balancing party that would take over or fix the price reasonably for a long term. Let's say for the world to new of the PPA, that's that's quite challenging and that's understandable due to the situation on the electricity market. Yeah, and um, one of the biggest one, I guess, was uh, still is the Robin Hood tax, uh, which is applied to all incentive-free projects. Um, and that's the next slide. Yeah, uh, it's otherwise called also energy suppliers tax. And it's applicable to um, energy suppliers, like in our case, someone who holds a gen electricity generation license, also those holding electricity trading license. And there are also other groups, but I just put these ones as they are most uh, relevant here. Um, exemptions are provided, um, exemption from Robin Hood tax provided only to those who hold um, combined small power plant permit, which means for given for capacities between 0 0.5 and 50 megawatt AC, and at the same time those who uh, are holders of a card or meta approval. So all those going for PPAs, um, they would be subject to that tax, and that is, yeah, again, 31% in addition to the CIT of 9%. That is a very, very big hurdle, and that um, when you calculate or you look at the project uh, from with and without the Robin Hood tax, it just completely changes the situation 180 degrees. Um, we also explore in trying to find out if there are any ways to uh, somehow reduce it or avoid it, or um, yeah, also hopeful that uh, maybe something will change from the regulator perspective. Um, because that's definitely we see as a way to move forward for the Hungarian market um, and it's a win-win for, for everyone here um, and also would help to achieve also these ambitious goals that uh, Hungary also has uh, for 2030 of 6.5 gigawatt of installed solar capacity. Um, yeah, so these are the main um, the main hurdles that we see for the PPAs and um, again maybe the next um, yeah, the, I will talk a little bit about challenges and opportunities we see um, I start with challenges, so we uh, finish uh, with uh, on the positive note with opportunities. 
Um, it's just a summary of what we a little bit already discussed. Yeah, so the, we, we observed the lack of liquidity on the long-term electricity market. Um, yeah, that the uh, high balancing costs and that the lack of balancing parts that would secure that uh, the balancing for the long term uh, reasonably. Um, that that um, uh, no corporate sign to date, but at the same time, uh, good to see the interest um, in, uh, in general, not only by corporates but also utilities and traders. Yeah, the Robin Hood tax again, um, yeah, as well, what also Istvan mentioned uh, on the um, use of agricultural land and that uh, the land rights are proper ones are really there only after COD. Solutions are there and they are available, so uh, you, you can mitigate that. But of course, it's not just not as easy. Um, yeah, limited grid access and high grid connection costs, of course. It depends on the project, but still uh, something to consider for us as well. And again, yeah, um, euro foreign situation, um, yeah, that's a non-euro investment that increases a little bit complexity for the Central European uh, experienced investor. Um, from the op uh, positive sides, um, yeah, we see that again, uh, Hungary is an active market with steadily and quite um, impressively increasing solar PV capacity. Um, we see a commitment from the government as well to achieve this quite ambitious goal of um, 6.56 gigawatt of by 2030, which means it's basically around 500 of um, a megawatt of an additional and so capacity every year. And that is also something which definitely um, drives us as well. Um, yeah, again, the commitment from the government to diversify the energy um, sources um, and increase the capacity domestically. Um, yeah, again, high imports of electricity supply, that PPAs are legally allowed, which is not the case in all the countries, uh, neighboring countries at least. Um, that, uh, yeah, again, um, availability of uh, potential off-takers, great work, international ones, um, that market prices are good enough, are high enough to, um, to provide for attractive PPAs. That Hoops is also been uh, now developing further and further with increasing um, traded volumes. Yeah, and um, also from our first uh, indications that banking sector is also there available uh, for, the, for the, the project finance solutions are also there. So these are our key um, take takeaways, so to say, what we see and um, still hopeful that, um, that we find a way to work around that. Um, thank you very much for your attention. I think we still have another 10 minutes at least for the Q&A session. Um, thank you, and here is um, for any other further inquiries, please uh, find here my, my email address to, to reach out directly as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lia. Uh, thank you, Sunny. Indeed, we'll start the Q&A now. We already have some questions, but feel free to, uh, to send them over. I'll just move to the, uh, to the, to the Q&A slide. Here we are. Uh, well, let's uh, let's start with a question for both because we, we have actually some more specific questions I'm going to address uh, to you uh, maybe individually. Um, actually, so the first one is on the um, on the metal tender, right? So um, if you would comment on the metal metal tender, and do you think that we will see it perhaps uh, going continuing as it is over the next five years? Or do you think it will continue over a shorter time span? Um, what's your what's your forecast here on this one? Will it last? And if, if so, if yes, for how long? The metal tender. Well, yeah. it's uh, it's continuous because there is an eagerness uh, from the industrial uh, uh, from the, from the sector for the tender just because of the price uh, because of because of the uh, reduced merchant cost and uh, obviously because of the Robin Hood and uh, from the governmental point of view uh, frankly speaking I never heard any uh, negative uh, negative uh, thoughts about the meta tender so we we consider it as a successful tool even uh, to uh, even to to set up the right capacities year by year so it, it it is it is it is definitely an ongoing thing and will continue. Yeah, maybe if a complete answer, do you want do you want to add anything uh, anything to that there? Maybe? I, I have myself many questions about the matter to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, so, so we can do we can do an internal today. Perfect. Of course, we also of course we have been following up on the meta tenders, and we have seen that um, uh, there was, um, which is also one of my questions would be why was for this year the capacity again reduced to twenty? 
is that kind of a signal from the government saying, look, the rest of the bigger projects, uh, let's support the smaller projects and the bigger projects shall go into the PPA? Or also, how do they actually do, do they plan to reach this uh, huge goal of six gigawatt uh, by 2030 just by matter? I, I don't think this is happening. What we have seen, of course, is that um, the, the prices um, are quite aggressive and the tenders are hugely oversubscribed, like the one the la from the last year, right? Um, what is what we don't like maybe is that you either win a meta tender or you don't, because we, at the moment with Robin Hood tax, it's, um, it's very hard to build a project. Um, and this is also something which is um, completely a different situation in some other markets where you have this alternative at this moment. Um, we don't know what will happen with this Robin Hood tax. Of course, many rumors, and hopefully, uh, or we maybe will find a solution soon. That's what we're working on. That, uh, yeah. But uh, also, would be interested to to understand the the future also of Meta in terms of what what we, the government will be trying to reach out with that. Just in addition to Robin Hood tax, uh, it is definitely uh, uh, so. It's nominated in the in the strategy, in the uh, energy strategy, that it is uh, should be removed. So it's uh, from uh, from official uh, from official speaks we understood, and we are uh, we are uh, we are on to remove. But when it will happen, obviously yeah. this is the question because the tax is there. It is uh, well with the uh, with the uh, Erno and with the solar associations. We constantly lobbying uh, to removing this uh, tax to the mm -hmm. Ministry of Finance. The Energy Ministry is completely understand the situation. The Finance Ministry, well, they have a different interest. Yeah, of course, <laughs> that's understandable. Thirty-one percent. That's not something you find uh, uh, very often, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's definitely uh, well. Everyone is about, uh, it, it, and that's exactly what we are hopeful of. Because without the Robin Hood tax, again, that's just, um, yeah, and that's a, that would be a really huge push to, for for Hungary for the PPA market and also for really reach that goal for to install the six gigawatt by 2030. Regarding the capacity reduction, um, well, I don't have uh, uh, clear answers at yet. Uh, but what was, uh, let's say, the first uh, uh, first uh, rumors from uh, from the ministry and from other uh, authorities that there are huge capacities uh, uh, for application, and and because of the balancing issues, they want to a bit cool down the market and having mm -hmm. the uh, having a tool in the hands at at very first having time yeah. <laughs> to get tools. And after that, it it can it can continue. So it's uh, it's happening because we have uh, we we do not have flexibility, and uh, that's the reason why we're trying to uh, handle it on some way. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Elia, maybe a question for you. I don't know how much we, you can share actually this one, but uh, one attendee asks if uh, you expect to conclude any any PPA project within the next twelve months in Hungary. Well, you never know what comes tomorrow. <laughs> I could definitely would not uh, say that no, because I mean, the, the interest is there. But um, maybe you have also seen from the slide, it takes about a few months, uh, sometimes just to uh, negotiate PPAs. Of course, when the market is completely new, it, it's normal that it takes a little bit longer, especially when there are some, some alternatives in the legislation. But otherwise, um, yeah, w why not? If, especially if they we um, proceed there with, without the Robin Hood tax, that's definitely uh, that's definitely possible. So I uh, said so it's Robin Hood tax really stands uh, stands in the way of not development. Uh, Isvan, I'll, I'll come to you uh, here because actually we have we have one question specifically for you. Uh, so uh, until this moment, uh, we have not seen any of the 2019 uh, awarded Metar projects completed yet, right? Uh, so the attendee asks, um, how do you see at this point financing uh, by banks? How do you see that okay. uh, achieved? And also, are banks actually prepared to finance these projects? Gotcha. Uh, well, it was a big question, uh, let's say, a year ago, how the commercial banks will finance the Metar, uh, Metar uh, projects. But what I heard from the market, it's definitely the, the banks developed their uh, tool set and we are ready to finance uh, Metar projects, uh, which uh, obviously the investor should be credible. So it's, 
it's 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 a, it's a kind of mix of uh, project financing and the investor financing but uh, but but there are tools uh, there are uh, there are products from the banks uh, we prepared we understood we even considering the balancing uh, balancing cost of the uh, of the project so so it's uh, it's developing definitely and uh, well uh, what is about uh, uh, the topic if uh, if uh, projects are not completed or, or yet so it should be uh, it, it it should be done because as far as i know all of the uh, big uh, projects had been already um, uh, transacted or let's say uh, we are on the go so it's i do not i expect rather uh, rather incompletion issues with the card projects with the big card projects which was uh, well uh, sometimes the legislation was not uh, not on place when we yeah. um, maybe a quick uh, question also is fun, but uh, if we talk about not just meta projects but ppa based projects i guess also uh, banks would be quite happy to uh, to finance such projects as well when you have a very credible uptake on the other side right Exactly, exactly. When I approach the banks, uh, the, the major uh, uh, Hungarian banks with the with the PPA idea, we were really open. Uh, so it's all the uh, it's a question, obviously, the the length of the financing, uh, the the delivery. So what's the, the pricing? So what's so there are certain questions which which have to be done. But but because the BPA uh, PPA uh, as product is quite mature in uh, in Western Europe, so I think it it should be done. So we were definitely open for that. Yeah. Uh, a question to both. I think this is also uh, can be a bit sensitive. Let's see if we can give an answer here. Actually. Uh, you know, what are your expectations? What are your expectations? So, for oversubscribing and actual tender and, and bid prices, maybe you don't need to go in specific detail, but if you at least uh, can give your estimate, you know, uh, on a on, on a price range here, uh, what are your thoughts? And that because price. I gave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Sorry, 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 I didn't catch you there. What did you say? I'm saying this one, I'm giving that to you. Uh, so we're talking okay. about tender price, yeah? Well, yeah. Uh, the nature of the 20 megawatt uh, uh, type of projects that uh, it is from economical point of view, they are more pricey. If you do not uh, find a good uh, good medium voltage connection, uh, midi cheap medium voltage connection, you have to uh, connect it to the high voltage. And on the high voltage uh, high voltage uh, uh, level, the substation development costs are, uh, are are definitely high, and it's compared to German and whatever. So in Hungary, it's it's a it's a topic. Uh, so uh, that was my very first intention that it it should increase the uh, price of the project. However, who will compete for the project mm -hmm. tender? It can be it can be an EPC. Sometimes, so most of the uh, who are who are who are in the race sometimes developers or EPCs. Uh, we rather. Um, we, we sometimes do not consider the the, the overall length and uh, and let's say uh, value of the uh, of the projects just you know the quick uh, a, a, a quick win sometimes so it's um, we'll see so I I expect uh, still a high competition but it will be even more tough because of the structure of the uh, structure of the projects because of the 20 megawatt capacity uh, limit. Clear, 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 absolutely. Uh, I, I would, yeah, yeah. I can, I can also add from the developer perspective. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, we actually also looked into projects which are 20 megawatt AC, and then um, when you really need to install also to connect to the high voltage line, it's just it's not that it's not possible. It is possible, and but you when you look at the previous tender and you see the price of 16, 17 forints, it's just you can't make it work. Um, yeah, so uh, we, we come to the same conclusion and then as also since Islan also says the competition will still be there and we expect the same thing, it, it's becoming challenging, especially when you just don't have the other option. I, I can also talk about like land issues in this case because if we've got projects um, 
the, you could conclude with land on agreement knowing that you already have your optic secured. You could provide quite flexible terms that you, you develop in two, three years and that's it. In this case, we um, try to negotiate with the landlords in a way that, yeah, but we don't know if we will win the tender and we don't have other options. And they, they, their mindset is not there yet. So they say, it's not my problem, which is, of course, also understandable. So you, you balance all these different aspects here as well. Yes, uh, maybe, and then we can wrap up the hour. One final question, uh, just to make sure, because actually we um, we talked uh, at the beginning, right? It's not about the uh, investment protection um, uh, law, uh, right, in uh, in Hungary. So um, just to cross check, one attendee is asking if he sells a PV farm uh, for more than 350 million uh, fiorins. Is it in that case, uh, no matter what, still the approval from the ministry is required, right? Yeah. Any kind of transaction, if it is involves international investor, which is not Hungarian, uh, it uh, and uh, they will check the final uh, beneficiary. Yeah. So it's uh, <laughs> tricks cannot be done. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, it is subject to that. Well, uh, I really, I really uh, was expect that it will it will cancel very soon because uh, it was rather a big fear, you know, when when uh, when the economy fall uh, fallen down, everyone thought that we we are not uh, strong enough. But well, especially Hungary uh, fought against uh, COVID quite uh, well, so the 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 increase of the economy is already started. We have very good numbers, whatever. So there are no reason to uh, to continue this rule anymore. Perfect. So, so we managed. We managed to be uh, within the hour. So, so uh, uh, I have many more questions there, but we'll definitely be, be tough to address them. I'll pull up again in case you want to engage with uh, with Lee Eisman uh, here. Also, their, their email addresses for any questions. Uh, well, thank you both for being with us. And a reminder: uh, you, you can actually catch us in person uh, in Budapest on October 21st, second edition of the Soil Future Hungary after 2021. Uh, also, so other, other upcoming events in the same region on the similar topics were in Poland on the 2nd of September and our flagship Soil Asset Management Europe event in Frankfurt. Uh, yeah, Isma, thanks again. It was a pleasure, really insightful content. And, and, and we, once again, thanks for, for sharing your knowledge here with us. Thank you. I also gained knowledge, Thank so it's, uh, it's great. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, thanks everybody for being with us. Bye.